Welcome to the 365 Message Centre show where we help you plan for change, prevent or fix, stay informed. This week we'll be talking about some feature updates to Microsoft Word and comments, modern comments. Love it when they add that modern prefix. Um, uh, some changes and updates to the roadmap site, which will be good. Helps people to keep up to date with what's coming. Um, spam notifications and call toast. That's, uh, yeah, there'll be some things to say about that. Um, background effects, when you're joining Teams meetings, fire your browser. SharePoint spaces and styly style styles of text. Daniel, I'm reading through each one. Uh, I've got, I've got to the you last are. one. You are. I was wondering when you're going to stop. Got to the stop. last one. I've got to get them all in. Got to be consistent. Um, they're retiring, retiring some stuff in Outlook around um, add-ins that you can have in Outlook for iOS and Android. So why did I read the lot? If you're being, well, if you're being consistent, hmm. then you would only you know do two or three of them. But you would have read them all. That's yeah. fine. I just. Hello, everyone. I hope you liked Daryl's list. Uh, show's over. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, let's play that outro music and both we... turn around. <laughs> nice. Hey, we don't just read messages nope. no. around here. We tell you why we think they're important. Mm. We try to help you plan for change. Yes. We, and stay we, we add the context. We add the opinions. We try and draw some from out of you, too. You know, you tend to drop stuff in the yeah. live chat and you add your comments to the videos mm. as well. Fantastic, because it's, uh, I want to learn Love from it. you guys too, what you think. Speaking of uh, learning, I don't, I don't have a, <laughs> no. was, go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube and hit the little ding bell thing and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're on the audio podcast, make sure you are subscribed to the audio podcast and then tell your friends about it. Maybe send out a tweet or a Facebook post. Go ahead. You can hit pause and go ahead and do that right now. We'll mm. wait. Well, we won't wait. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. I'm pretty sure you can. Thanks multitask. for doing it. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for doing it. So, um, yeah, it, make sure you follow us on all the socials. We are 365 MCS on all of them. We are. But. Enough with the promotion, yeah. Daryl. Uh, actually, you got any general comments about the, the week that's just passed in, in the space of Microsoft 365? What have you seen? What have you heard, buddy? Um, only complaints. Oh, really? What happened? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I haven't seen too much, to be honest. It, it feels like it was a bit of a slow week, and we're going to kind of talk about some things that you know, came up with the uh, message center this week, but I didn't really, if I felt like there's, we've had this big mountaintop this past uh, month or so. Um, and here we are, we're kind of living it. We're living the dream yeah. as we've talked about uh, what two episodes ago or so we were talking about August is going to be a big month with yep. updates. Well, here yep. we are. And it's so, going to land any week now. <laughs> <laughs> It's good though. Like I do see some stuff yep. that's being pushed out even further, or um, there's quite a range of months to say, here's where we're mm. starting to deploy, and here's where it's going to finish. Um, now, there's some of the updates that are going in are going to be quite hefty in terms of change in the background. Um, yeah. Well, okay. We don't really have a massively particular order here. Daniel and I, we get together before the show and we talk about how we're going to talk about things and what order. We're going to start off with, um, where is it? You might actually hear too some, some background noise as, as my pavement is still being fixed outside our office. Or outside our house. It's government work. They've been working on the pavement for <laughs> four and a half weeks. but it's a, Yeah, it's a, it's a big job, big job. Right, okay. Um, Hit us with some modern, modern comments, comments. Modern comments in words. So it's a feature update, MC277410. You might feel like you've seen some of this already as it starts to, or has started to arrive and it's been in, in the product for a while in Word Online. Uh, but they're bringing some of that consistent experience now down into the Office products. And it is... Uh, What's modern about it? It's about trying to have conversation in giving reviews uh, or reviewing documents. You can add a comment 
about a certain thing within a document and highlight it. Been able to do that for ages. Been using that a lot recently with some of my own work at, at, at my workplace. Um, but being able to chat between people and reply and at mention. So you will have the ability to, to at mention people. Well, you can at mention people now. And it gives that notification to say, hey, I've been mentioned in this comment. I better go and do something. Now, the update, I'll just call out the, the key changes and dates before we switch over to some fuller screen action because there's a great blog post that shows us some more graphical stuff around this. Um, this update will be what current preview is <laughs> was delivered in February 2021 um, and current channel it's now arriving uh, for, for everyone else who um, uh, was not receiving things earlier so that was uh, was June and now it's August uh, so it's really coming to everyone's products now um, but what does this look like well let's take a look Daniel well, blog post. Yep. Yes. So this is from our tech community. Maybe I'll put us on the other side. No, I won't because that's the wrong scene. <laughs> 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 Never mind. Um, the uh, comments that you can have, um, rather than typing away and then, I guess when you click away from the comment that you're creating in review, Sometimes you do that because you're going back into the document to try and change some stuff and then go back and finish a comment. But what the old behavior was, as soon as you did that, it sent the comment off to the person that you had mentioned. So now they're trying to make it feel more like chat, Daniel, where they actually have a button that says, you've drafted your comment, it's not going to be sent until you hit the send button. What do you think of that? Um, it's very interesting. I, the way the comments have worked in the past definitely was a little bit weird. And I have thought I have saved the message my, or my comment multiple mm -hmm. times, you know, like you, you type it in and you go away and you're like, Oh, it didn't, it didn't save it. Oops. <laughs> I got to go back and type it again. So having it, you know, kind of say, you got to click that mm -hmm. button. I think, um, you know, would help with that as well. Yep. Uh, this other, um, aspect to it, uh, it's a little confusing. Um, okay, and I'll, I'll say why. Like, let, we're just looking at Word on our desktop now. We're in, we're, we're highlighting certain content within the document, and we pass a comment, so comment appears. And there's the comments are uh, floating off to the right, which is what we've, we've experienced for quite some time. But you can change to a comments conversation view now, and it, it stacks it as if it was a, a chat or like a conversation thread. Yeah. Um, it means that you can still navigate through all the different comments, but it's pushing them all off to the side so that it's clearer what you have responded to and what you haven't. And I don't know about that. Well, that, and that, but that was a big gripe, I think, for people with modern comments when we've talked about this in the past on the, on the show is uh, that it uses up too much space. Mm. So if you look at those comments right there, the way it's showing before it switches to that comments pane, th there's just a lot of space mm. there that's wasted. Um, so maybe this would help with that a little bit uh, because if you bring in the comments kind of pane there, yeah. then you can zoom in on the content right. and make right. it bigger. Yeah, actually that's a good point. Uh, it means that you can put your focus more on the content. But when do you have this same thing open in Word Online or heaven forbid we open it in uh, Microsoft Teams? Do you edit? Oh, why did I say heaven forbid? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> it, it gets further confused because you have a conversations button, which then opens the Microsoft Teams uh, chat along the side. Let's... And then are we having a conversation in the document or beside the document? And Daryl, you're... you're... You're highlighting issues. Oh. Um, I would appreciate you not doing okay. that. Uh, no, I just, I feel I'm right there with you. The whole comments and conversation and it, we really need to educate our users on the differences mm -hmm. and that making a comment and then having a conversation in that comment, right? Back and forth, at mentioning, all that. 
is different than having doing clicking the conversation, which is you know than having that threaded conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it it is different. Yeah. Um, I don't like that it's different to be honest, but it yeah. is. And so we need to. Th- this is just one of those where I think having and especially with this nice blog post, bringing this up and and making that available to your users uh, in your newsletter or your uh, online training or that you keep up with, whatever, however you educate your users, this is a a link that you should publish Mm. for them. And as as an organization or as a team, uh, come up with your own customs for how you will use this. You know, are are you deciding to have your conversations in the document? Or are you going to have them beside the document and refer back to things that you've edited? So yeah, it's about deciding the way we want to work. But that's enough of that. We've we've looked at that enough. Enough, enough already, right? Enough. Well, let's let's get on to something else, Daniel. Um, Microsoft 365 roadmap, roadmap. site updates. Right. Yes, this is kind of really in line with what we're doing here. Of keeping track with the changes that are coming. This is MC277639. And this message is all about updating the actual roadmap site to make it more usable. Make it, And really it's more readable, I guess I should say consumable. Uh, because the changes really are, after you get past the, they're moving filters um, so that, you know, it's, it's down where the search bar is going to be. They're moving the uh, last added will be added into filters in the new updated. But then really once you get past that, it's all about the looking at an item and the card. You're just, instead of a grid view, your information on up, every update is gonna be displayed on this card. And they're gonna have some uh, additional um, functionality when it comes to having a um, a preview. So if an item does have a preview, if they're, if they've going to have a preview of this feature that's on the roadmap, then they're going to have a preview date. So that's a new thing you'll be able to consume via, if you're, you have any kind of API usage, you know, you have a program reading the API. Um, and then it'll be shown on that card, uh, the preview date and, and time. And then if it's in preview, it'll say it's in preview. So this is happening in early September, so less than a month away. I will say it, I'm, I'm not seeing the biggest thing that I would love to see in the roadmap, which is the ability for me to um, follow only the content that I want to follow. Uh, that is still a huge gap. You know, if I'm a SharePoint person and I only want to show or follow SharePoint updates, uh, and as a user, I don't want to have to build a program or anything else to do this. I want to just filter it and say, give me an RSS feed or something just for this mm. content. But um, but this is making it a little more consumable and I'm, I'm liking that they're actually paying attention to the site. Yeah, and this is, you know, the uh, one of the big two, big three as part of keeping people up to date with change is it all starts at a roadmap. Yeah. And then it eventuates in the message center and actual delivery. Uh, yeah. Yeah, don't give us any, um, Daryl, don't give me any don't spam. Don't give any spam. Well, why not, spam. man? I mean, uh, look, I... I, I want to be able to tell when you're calling me, so I'm, um, I want it to tell me that spam's well, coming. Well, I can do that. I can do that. Spam notifications and call toast. Call toast. <laughs> Mmm, let me, uh, I'll have a slice of that cool toast, thanks, uh, and just put a whole... Of, with some orange yeah, marmalade. Orange, orange marmalade. Office orange marmalade. Back to topic. Spam notifications and cool toast, MC277640, is all about the organizations that are receiving phone calls in via Microsoft Teams uh, and popping up the possibility that the call coming in might be spam. Spam lightly. You can see that on the image there. A nice little yellow exclamation mark. Um, Yeah, thrilled to give that um, particular feature to you. Uh, Daniel, you called out that um, where is it that we can see that they're getting that list from? You know, where is this spam list and how do I get off that list? Good question. (laughs) Well, 
<laughs> yeah, it's a good question. You know, this is rolling out on by default. Mm. And so um, whenever you're getting these notifications, things like, okay, think about where do you get spam the most? Me, my mobile phone. And well, my provider has given me an app where I can report spam. I can see why it was reported by other people. And then I can also unblock it like or unspam it where I can say, no, this is not spam, so don't mark it as spam in the future. Uh, only my question here is, where are they getting this information that it's likely spam? And is it something that we can control as a user? I, I don't see anything in this update to say, you know, someone who calls me on a regular basis that I want to talk about, want to talk to, sorry, that, but it keeps getting more spam, maybe I should, you know, how do I report that it's mm. not? So that that's what I was pointing out is, is uh, I'm not sure what list this is using to do it, but we all want less spam and we all want to talk to less uh, computers, you know, or princes from countries from somewhere in the around the world that wants to, to you know, to us to deposit money in their account so they can give us millions and millions, you know, those, your car warranty, you know, all of those kind of, calls and texts that we get we want less of that so anything that can help us identify it that that would be great yeah it's it's part of that um push to making us more secure and helping us to filter through the likelihood of people pretending to be someone that they're not and and if these numbers are coming up consist continuously with um you know dialer spam or um, they're known as a source where just calling people randomly to be painful, and <laughs> this will help. Um, Daniel? Yes. There's, uh, yes. I, I want to know about um, background effects, because I'm quite a big fan okay. of, of that within Teams, um, but there's something happening there. There is. It's introducing background effects on web MC277112. And uh, we, we've talked about this on the show before. I use Teams on the web sometimes, and it is nice to see additional functionality coming our way. We've been using background effects and the client, or we have been able to, uh, in addition to Blur. Uh, but now we're going to um, be able to do this in web, and this will be rolling out early September. Expected the rollout to be completed by late September. So you're going to be able to just have those wonderful uh, video effects uh, in the browser when you're sharing your your video in the browser. Now, the last thing to be done, Daryl, and and maybe you have comments on this, uh, but uh, on this message. But the the one thing that I find missing when I join on the web is when I share my screen or share content, my video turns off. And while that may be, you know, I understand good reason for it with bandwidth and such and and browser compatibility or whatever. But I feel like that's, you know, a huge uh, problem um, that if they could just get that fixed, I think I would be really happy in the in the web. What do you think? Uh, it, yeah. Being able to uh, show your face and express it while you're presenting from the web yeah. browser and you're presenting content. Super important. Um, yeah. I think the best way to explain it at the moment is you've got your desktop when you're sharing it is essentially a webcam. And uh, perhaps it's just that the web browser client right now can't handle two webcam sources, even though one's actually mm. a shared desktop. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, I think, yeah, the, the background effects on the web client are important. Uh, because a fair few people do join from that if they don't have the Teams client. Um, but on a side comment, they've rolled background effects out to the mobile client, but only to iOS. And Android was promised, I think, back in May, and there's been no update to that as to when it might be coming. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, Sorry, it'll arrive Android. when it arrives. Well, give it some give it space, some space. Give it some well, space in SharePoint. Oh, I'll probably tell people about it in SharePoint. I might even be um, inspired to create a 
all immersive news post about that and uh, allow you to f- get a 360 view of the situation. How'd I do with that one? All right. <laughs> oh, Share your point spaces. Add styles for text and annotation icons. Uh, this is MC277466. There's probably not too many people that would be um, celebrating this. Uh, because Spaces has not really had quite a uh, a big uptake, but those who have will know that this is a, a good thing. Um, they had annotation come in uh, last year, and it wasn't really anything to be too excited about. Sort of a, a little badge with some text over the top of it, and there wasn't much you could do to that text, and it really wasn't super readable. Um, it served its purpose, but there wasn't much you could do with it at all. Uh, you know, it's a pity that they don't have anything here. I wonder if they have it in help and support. I'm going to just try it. Let's let's see if this message actually has something here about the annotations. What, what, what could, could go, go wrong? wrong? I mean, this just, says, this show. let's just try it. How to use each web part. 360 <laughs> image, virtual tour, add text to SharePoint space. Right. Aha. This is the new thing. Uh, it used to be just that little mm. white box there with text over it, but they now allow you to have headings. Um, what else? You can change the size. You can pad it so that you can actually get the text to be in a different position within your background box to give it some sense of depth and line spacing. You can center yeah. it, so that's all cool. That's about it in terms of styles, but it, it does make yeah. a difference to have uh, more options. Uh, the workarounds have been that you get like a, an image and you do the image. text yourself and drop it in there, but it, then it doesn't really behave as yeah. text. So anyway, it's good to see that yeah. for those of us creating spaces um, and we'll hope to see some more of that develop. Uh, I think we've seen some good examples of where to use it, like in introducing people to uh, a new workplace or um, how to use meeting rooms and given that immersive experience of, oh, this is what I'm going to see when I come into the room. Um, but yeah, other than that, if you don't have the gear to create those pictures, a bit limiting. Yeah. Um, Daniel? Let's retire this this episode after reading this last <laughs> message and... Yes, see, this is last message retirement. Oh, yeah. Outlook for iOS and Android to stop syncing with Facebook, Meetup, and Evernote calendars. MC277124. So this is, and this is rolling out beginning September 13th, 2021. Um, you will be getting um, a, you will no longer be able to sync those items into Outlook. So if you're on your Outlook mobile and you go to the settings uh, of your of the account, you can go down to the very bottom. I'm on iOS. You go down to the very bottom, well, toward the bottom. Um, you can actually add uh, calendars. So you can go into the um, add-ins so you it says connect your favorite apps and services and oh no no it's calendar apps sorry calendar apps not add-ins calendar apps and there's three options right now which are the ones in this message facebook meetup and evernote so evernote you can sync your reminders facebook you can sync your events that you're going to that you've you know you said you're going to and your friend's birthdays and then meetup you can sync your actual meetups that you're going to the events but not for very long so in less than a month they're going to turn that off they're going to send a two-week reminder within the app if you actually are currently using this functionality uh, there is no workaround other than find another way to do it. Um, is there a suggestion? Uh, oftentimes these apps themselves will allow syncing from within the app on your phone to your phone calendar. Uh, that may be one way to do it, but it is not going to be available in Outlook for iOS or Android. I think, I think uh, after a couple September of the services uh, um, published to an ICS file 
Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. it's coming in as a, a fuller calendar experience rather than synchronizing individual events. But clearly, I mean, it yeah. hasn't been used enough uh, for them to want to continue right. to support it. Frankly, I can tell you why it hasn't been used. Who, who knew before this week that you could sync your Facebook and Meetup calendar to your phone? Put your hand down. I, I put my hand <laughs> down because I didn't know. Huh? Um, so maybe if we don't promote a feature, it doesn't get oh, used. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, good point. Mm, so if nobody knows, <laughs> um, it doesn't follow the mantra, if you build it, they will come. It just doesn't. Um, you know, if you hide it, I mean, you got to go in there and settings and scroll down and click calendar apps. And, there it is. Uh, you know, anyway, maybe maybe other people knew about it, but uh, you weren't using it enough. So Microsoft is killing mm. it. Don't blame yourself, but, well, do. <laughs> anyway, that is the end of our messages. Short week. Short week. It is a short week. We really do appreciate you joining us, though. And, you know, we're having some conversations about enhancing the show in the future. So I hope that you'll stick around. And if you have any comments about how you think maybe we should enhance the show, we'd love to... Uh, Hear those. Hit us up on the socials. We are 365MCS on the socials. Hit us up with some comments. We'd uh, love to engage with you on those. Uh, Daryl, is that it? That, that's it? it. That's it. Um, we, yeah, we, we're always keen to try and hear more of how these things are landing in your environments. And I think it's the stories and the examples that, that help inspire us to um, get, get change across within our own organization. Uh, sometimes we don't want to dip our toes in and try this stuff until others have done it too. Um, but interesting thing with the cloud here is that a lot of the stuff is, is arriving anyway. Um, so let's let's address change and try and help each other out. Indeed. Well, yep. <laughs> After that pregnant pause, we'll play the outro. <laughs> hey, we could be uncomfortable. It's yeah, okay. fine. I'll do that. Goodbye, Goodbye, everyone. I did it again.